they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me unto the world, even so I also send them into the world. And verse 20, neither pray I for those alone, but this is for us. Neither pray I for those alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So we let it in that in itself, even though John um, talks about how Jesus prayed over the disciples, and he didn't leave it at that. He said he, he prayed for us all, all of us that's believing on his name, all of us that God has called and set aside and, and anointed to do his will. He's already prayed for us. So if the if the prayer, if if the prayer of God is already on our life, who? Who can be against us? If the prayer of God, and that's the thing of, that we are not allowing our, our, our minds or our spirit to grasp hold to the anointing and, and, and the power of God. That's he said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So what's on the inside of me. Is greater than whatever is on the outside. And that's the thing that we have to be mindful of. Once our spirit connects with the Holy Spirit, there's nothing, nothing too hard for us that we do in Christ, in him. I can do it in him. Outside of him, I cannot do it. But in him, I can do all things in Christ who has strengthened me. And say, like, with God, all things are possible. Not without him, but with God. And that's the thing that we have to be mindful of, that no matter what comes across our pathway, no matter what we are facing, is with God, all things are possible. And so we see here that Christ's prayer for the believer in John 16, that we're covered under the canopy of God's protection. Let's go to, uh, still dealing with Peter, and I top, top it again, don't count me out. Let's go to Matthew 16. <laughs> Matthew 16, verses 13. Through 23. And this is dealing with Peter's confession. Just seeing a situation that took place and happened that Christ ended up letting Peter know. Now, you know, this here is letting us see how Peter, upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter's confession about the Christ. We see that the anointing of God is upon Peter's life. You know, God has uh, already commissioned foretelling. Jesus is already foretelling what Peter will do. But in the midst of all of that, the beginning, in the midst of all of that, Peter being called as one of the 12 disciples, he was being among the three of the closest disciples, um, to Jesus that he called upon and that was on the, the uh, mountain of transfiguration that was seen the glories of God. Peter of being able to be that strong person in the group. And that's something that we have to be able to allow God to use. God knows your strongholds and God knows your weakness. And he knows what you're capable of doing regardless of the weaknesses that you have. But looking at seeing how Peter in the beginning, how God had already orchestrated his life of what he was, even him being a leader as being a fisherman, all of that portrayed, it was leading up unto, even to the point that what we're dealing with now, Peter's fall, of him thinking that, Okay, after this took place, now I've been set up here, and, and people know who I am. I, I've been I don't walk with Christ, you know. I'm one of His chosen, and now this. So a lot of times when things take place and happen, remember the call. 
Remember that you are chosen by God. No matter what taking place in your life, no matter what circumstances are coming up against you, remember the call that God has placed upon your life because things and situations are going to come to test you. Things and situations, troubles going to come, trials going to come, tests going to come, hurts going to come, failures going to come. All of those things are going to come to, to test, to try your faith. To try that, and, and trying your faith meaning that to, tr to test that word that you say you put on the inside. To test that word that you say that you're standing by. To test that word to say that, okay, this is the word that I stand on is the word of God. Lord, your will is your word. Your word is your will. So I'm standing on this. So when the things and situations come, all I have is your word. I have nothing else to stand on but your word. So with this here, you know, don't count me out. A lot of times, like I say, we go through situations <clears throat> and such as Peter, when we when he went through the situation when Jesus told him Satan has desired to have you, to sift you as we, but I prayed for you. Now when Peter heard that, as you can read in the story, when Peter heard, Peter couldn't understand that. You know, Peter, that was something far from because what he knew, his faith in God. He knew how strong that he thought he was in God. That no, that, that something like that would never happen. But not knowing in certain circumstances and situations, you really don't know what you would do. And that's what something that took place. Here it is, our Savior ended up getting captured, put in prison. And Peter seeing all this taking place, even Peter defending, yeah, he, he defended. But when it came down to the test of saying that I am a part of the Christ, I am a part of who you just arrested, Peter denied. And that had to go forth and take place. And it was a humbling state for Peter. It was a humbling for him to realize I got you. You are not, you think you're strong. You think you 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 bold enough to stand up against anything on the natural, but on the spiritual, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. And so and that was something, and then looking at with Peter as we, we're gonna go to when he realized that. That he could do nothing without Christ. When he realized the, the, the weakness that was on the inside of him. That yeah, you, you a fighter in the flesh. But are you a fighter in the spirit? And that's a lot of times what people get caught up into. They can, you know, they can throw down. But when it comes to the word of God and standing on the word of God. And they can put a whole lot of scriptures. But when it comes to applying that word. When the tests and trials come. Can we stand? Are we able to use that word and apply it rightly divinely? Are we able to use that word and say, Lord, your word declares I shall live and not die. Your word declares all things are possible through you. Your word declares I'm, I'm a lender and not a bar. Your word declares I shall be the head and not the tail. Your word declares. You know, so when we are faced with certain circumstances and situations, that word is going to be tried. And whether or not if it's, it, it, and it's going to be tried to the point to see whether or not do you really believe what the word of God says? Do you really have a personal relationship with God to know that no matter what takes place, no matter what happens, will I be able to use this word and use it effective that it works for me. I can believe it for you, but can I believe it for me? And for again, don't count me out. Let's go to um, dealing with Peter again for us, the godly sorrow, work of repentance, which is in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. We're not going to go there. But let's go to Matthew 26. And this here is dealing with how Peter 
Jesus predicts Peter's denial of him and what that what took place in Peter's own spirit when he came to and realized what had happened. So uh, Matthew 26. Verses 69 through 75. 69 through 74 deals with the, the foretelling for his Peter going forth and doing the denial. But let's go down to verse 75. It say, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him, Before the crop crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Because that was something that Peter didn't think he could do. That was something that Peter, that was far from him ever being able to do that to his master to do that to a loving savior and to do that to someone that he has witnessed and seen the miracles he has witnessed and seen how god and the anointing was working through christ and seeing that knowing that christ was god in the flesh seeing all of this and then he, when he came to and that's what this when he remembered the words that Jesus said unto him, his eyes were open to the point that I did this. And that caused him to weep bitterly. And that's why I say with godless sorrow, work of repentance. So don't count me out, meaning that if God have a, a plan and a purpose for someone's life, if God has a plan and calling upon somebody's life, and he said, God said, you shall do this and you shall be this. If God said, no matter what take place, no matter what happened, God gonna bring that person forward. No matter what, what has happened, if there's godly sorrow, like we see with Peter, if there's godly sorrow there, we can't count nobody out because we don't know how somebody's praying and asking God for forgiveness. We don't know how about praying, and that's even when. When Jesus died and they buried him and the angels, you know, told Mary, tell the disciples to meet me in Jerusalem. And Peter, too, for, for that message to even come back to, to mention Peter's name, to be included in the gathering, that was a blessing in itself. And then to even know that Peter, even with the godly sorrow, he had to be in the midst to hear the message. To even be there. So it lets us see that, you know, a lot of times when situations take place and happen, restoration is always there. And we see that don't count me out because you never know what God has planned for a person's life. And we see as Peter's life goes on, we see that even at the, um, the day of Pentecost, who ended up standing up with boldness? Peter. Peter stood up. That was in Acts 2 and 14. When all of it was said and done, Peter was the one that was standing up with boldness to speak to the masses of people and let him know that this is what Joel talked about. You know, this is, you know, young men just dream dreams, old men shall see visions, and upon my handmaiden, you know, my spirit is poured out. So it lets us see that, you know, no matter what has taken place, no matter what has happened, don't count me out because God got a purpose and plan for me to do. God bless you. Um, I thank God for having this opportunity to be able to you, you want me trying to give you some more? <laughs> but I will call forth uh, Pastor Carr.
That's a Taurus called Elder Green. <laughs> Yeah, but that's an awesome message though. Don't count me out. Don't count me out. As Elder Green um preparing his way, making his way up here. Um that's an awesome message. I, I think that's something that should be uh dealt with in the body of Christ because so many times, you know, people make mistakes and mess up. But only God knows the heart of every individual. God knows the love that each person has towards him. Just because a person falls, that don't mean they not they can't get up. That God can't use them. Don't count me out. Don't count me out. They have a countdown to ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. <laughs> six. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, we thank God for the opportunity to stand before you tonight. Had quite a few things 